All right, welcome to module five. Now, there's a little bit of rehash in this module when it comes to videos and, and what we're covering. Uh, I've touched on it in some of the videos, but the text digs into it this module. In a nutshell, we're going to deal with Active Directory and what it is in this module. So, Active Directory in essence is a directory a place to go to find out or verify or confirm information now that's information about some object associated with the domain now in the labs that we're doing we're not going to have a domain name system or domain name services controller associated with our servers and that's just due to constraints we have in our virtual machines but what you will do in this module is to install active directory domain services i've got a video walking you through how to do that you'll do that on server 01 so in this module we'll actually set up ADDS. The role itself. Now we're not digging down into it and creating the domain and the OUs and those things. We're going to talk about the concepts in this module. We're going to get everything ready for it and in the next module you'll be going through and starting to configure the server and interacting with the things that are there. So, in a nutshell, our deliverables are going to be set up an ADDS role. We've got an optional task if you want to perform it, and that's installing a DNS role. But once you install it, I want you to remove it. Just the DNS. So, if you want to go through and get a feel for what it is to set up DNS or turn on that role enable that role I'll, I'll give you bonus point and homework for it if not no big deal we're only really going to use ADDS in this class relative to the virtual machines okay um, aside from that we're going to talk about um, OU's um, containers user accounts those kind of things and I'm, I'm gonna want you to go in and check to see what user accounts are built in in server 01 and document what accounts exist and what permissions are associated with each of those accounts that'll be the homework for this week so in a nutshell we're dealing with Active Directory and Active Directory is how we keep track of, like I said, all the objects associated with our domain. Now, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in there. We deal with the MMC. Now, that's the Microsoft Management Console to manage Active Directory services. And we can go in there and deal with each of the different Active Directory services within it and we'll be able to have access to that once we have ADDS set up and you'll see this we'll probably talk about this in a video maybe next week so with that said we've got Active Directory and that's like think about it like this database or this directory to go find out everything we need to know who could do what what permissions exist who we are related to it's everything's there okay. and that's our way one-stop shop of confirming or verifying permissions primarily along with relationships okay. so with that said traditionally we would have a domain controller and this domain controller which 
will be our server 01 and server 02 will be a domain member um, the server 01 will be our domain controller now we'll, we'll deal with that in a little bit uh, I'm going to talk more next module about the configuration how we're going to lay out the structure of our domain what OU's exist what domain controllers exist and you'll see some more about it as we move down so we will perform these tasks next week and I'll provide you to you the structure the infrastructure if you will of our network our domain what servers have what roles uh, what devices and users are members of different domains and we'll lay all of this out next module I don't want to overload you on this because we're configuring the server in this module so we're going to set up the domain we're going to set up the tree and We'll have forest, we'll have child domains within it. And as we come down, we see that we've got the forest, and within the forest, we have two tree domains. We've got the Dowdy local, and we've got the training local. So, in this, Let me scroll down a little bit more. In this setup, where we're looking at Active Directory domain structure and having an actual domain, as opposed to the current configuration of our virtual machines, which is a work group. And a work group is like a lot of individuals just standing around the room talking to each other. Nobody has any specific tasks or duties, rights or permissions to other things on the other machines. Whereas if we're talking about a domain, this is an organized group and there are members within this group that have rights and permissions to resources that are available everywhere. So think of it as a work group. In a way, this is like a mine, 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 mine. This is all mine mentality. And everybody hangs on to their resources. And if you want to share something with another system or user, that's your choice. But you determine what rights and permissions, and it's verified on your individual machine as opposed to it's a one-stop shop and it's verified on a server okay. so one is a, a traditional client server system and the others traditional peer-to-peer -peer network okay. now members within the domain have a trust relationship that exists between computers and the domain controller and the different domains and once that computer joins the domain we've got a SAM and that's a security account manager and that manages the trust between the different systems and so we've got different levels of security and relationships that are being documented within Active Directory. So we've got these relationships between the computers and the domain controllers and the different domains. But then we've also got functional levels where 
what is it that you actually do? Is it, are you the local machine? Are you training? Which one are we talking about? And I should say dot local or dot training, which one are we talking about? Or I should say the domain or the training. Um, from there, we can replicate things real easy because we kind of create these templates of sorts. So we define the relationships and I want to give somebody else the same permissions that you have. I, I could just replicate that. I want to create a new domain controller. Well, I'll just copy the one that I've got. It'll get all the same trust permissions and everything. It's just got a different name. If I want to modify something about it, that's easy. So that's huge. All right. um, the domain name system has been around a long time. And essentially, think about it as um, the name of domains on a network. And then we give them um, that the last little .com or .org um, to dictate a specific grouping of domains. So we've got domains, and then we've got domains that are members of .com, .org, and depending on whatever the criteria may be, will dictate which top level group you can be a member of. Now, domain name services allows us to resolve the domain name along with that .com, .org, whatever it may be, with an IP address. It can go beyond that when we're dealing with Active Directory domain services at DNS because once we get in deeper we we have the ability to point to resources that are a little deeper within the domain so we can resolve the host name itself we can resolve the fully qualified domain name, the IP address, depending on what we're, how we're going about trying to resolve whatever it is. Um, the DNS, we can have broken up into zones, and I like to compare the difference between DNS and WINS as DNS is like having I, I hate to use this phrase because it's not something that we use so much anymore well say 20 years ago if you didn't know somebody's phone number you could call information there would be a number 411 or whatever it may be or call the operator back when there was somebody actually minding the network on a telephone network and they could give you a number rel relative to a name so if you didn't know somebody's phone number you could reach out to this individual or this service and they would tell you the phone number for that individual. Now this is similar conceptually to DNS in that I don't know the IP address for the domain. Let me reach out to a DNS server and it will resolve the name, domain name, to an IP address. Now there's something else that we have and that's WINS. Now WINS 
doesn't resolve things by domain names. It resolves it by a NetBIOS name resolution. And this works differently. This is not something we traditionally use anymore. This would be something that uh, they do on a peer-to-peer -peer network where you keep track of somebody else peer-to-peer -peer that you've dealt with in the past and you resolve internally their IP address to their NetBIOS name. Think of this as old school this is new school, even though it's decades old, it's still new school compared to wins. Now, let's talk about OUs and containers. So, we've got the ability to have what we call organizational units, and they can contain users, groups, computers, and other OUs if we want. But we've got to keep in mind, an OU, a user can only be a member of one OU. Now, you can be a member of an OU that is a member of another OU. And technically, in a way, you're a member of two OUs, but it's one nested within the other. That's the only way you can be a member of more than one OU. So, essentially, we can create these organizational units that allow us to group together the different users, resources, computers, whatever it may be, into logical groupings. It's just a way to manage things. And not just manage things, but manage what we call group policy. We'll essentially create what are called group policy objects related to these OUs. And from there, we say, all right, everybody in this OU, here's the policy associated with you. You have access to these things. And only these people have access to these specific items in this unique grouping. It's not to say that somebody in another OU may have access to the one same thing that somebody in another OU has access to. It just means that that specific configuration is limited to that OU. Now, by doing that, it allows us to replicate things easy, to clone out permissions, policies. And we want to be able to do that because we hate thinking about large number of turnover within an organization. We don't want to think about the fact that, well, we're going to hire 40 people this year to replace the 35 that left we don't like thinking about people coming and going or having a HR revolving door. But it happens. There's turnover within any organization. And we want to be able to maintain or manage that turnover as efficiently as possible. And that's why we create these OUs and create these group policy objects. So that when somebody comes on board, boom. Here's your permissions, because you're a member of that group. By default, you inherit, by being a member of that group, you inherit these specific rights and permissions. Now, at the same time, I want to be able to shut things down and by having these groupings and managing these things the way we do, we're able to bring people on board a lot easier, 
add users, add groups, whatever it may be, replicate users, if you will, replicate objects, if you will, and do it efficiently. Now, we've got this concept here of containers. And I don't want to get deep into containers at this stage of the game and talking about containers um, because containers can have multiple meanings and containers and dockers are something that we use a lot today in cloud computing. And that's something I want to kind of put off. We'll talk about a little bit later. Okay. So, an OU can delegate control of whatever it may be to a specific OU. Um, within that OU, I can have different users. We can have groups within it. We're not limited to just these OUs. I can have groups. I can have um, different subdomains to break things up logically that way. Uh, you're, a me you're a member of the accounting domain or subdomain, and you're a member of the sales subdomain. They're separate, distinct, but they're still members of the overall corporate domain. Each one being separate and distinct. And by breaking it up into these logical groupings, I can protect the resources or isolate resources within those logical groups and control access to them. So in this module we're going to deal with different accounts and next module we're actually going to create some accounts and profiles when we go set up the actual infrastructure but at this point I just want you to get familiar with the concept of it and then we'll actually apply it in the next module so we've got these different types of groups. Is the group local? Is it global? Is it universal? Give the group a name and what kind of group is it? And we just go from there. There are some default groups and I don't want you to go through and list the groups in this homework assignment. I want you to list the different users. It's different. So we've got a user here, got a user here. These are groups. So I can be a member of multiple groups. I can be a member of the accounting group. And within the accounting group, there's a payroll subgroup. Permissions may be different at the different levels of that hierarchy. So take your time, go through step by step document what you've got to do for the active directory domain services setting up that role and if you do the optional document that as well so just do some screenshots along the way get a screenshot of it when you can see all of the different roles or services on the dashboard it's a great single shot it shows everything set up and running at any given point 
and um, you can just include them in a single Word document and go through and explore the different roles that exist. I shouldn't say roles, the different user accounts that exist in that Server 01. So ask questions in the discussion, reach out, ask questions in Canvas. I'll see you in the next module.